This is Smooth Track, it's an Android application for head tracking for PC games. So racing games, flight sim games, uh, space games, anything that uses Track IR will work with Smooth Track. So you can see it is actually using the camera. It uses the front facing camera on your phone. And the reason why it uses that one is because you need to be able to see your face to line it up and it then tracks your head movements. And then that data is then transferred to your PC, then into the game. So the software you use on your PC is called OpenTrack. OpenTrack is open source. And, um, and that is basically an emulator for Track IR. So anything that works with Track IR is going to work with um, open track, which means it's always always going to work with smooth track. So very universal compatibility. Um, the actual app itself is nine dollars ninety nine, and it may not work with all Android phones. The phone needs to be able to support the AR uh, API, which is part of um, um, sort of like the sort of Android operating system. But not all phones are compatible with that. So to find out if your phone does work before you go too deep into this and get too excited is uh, just go to Google Play on your phone and go to a Smooth Track. So obviously just do a search for Smooth Track. And on the landing page for the software, if you, it will let you know if, it will, if it's available for your device that you know, you're know opening Google Play on. So you'll know if it works or not straight away. Uh, for reference, I'm using a Pixel 6a phone here. Let's run through the interface here and um, the first thing you need to do to get up and running and it's the only thing you really need to do in this app is you need to update the IP address. So the IP address will be your PC's local area network IP address. To find that it's pretty easy. There's also instructions here how to do that. Uh, so you can see there's lots of steps here but it's just well described but it's actually quite easy to do. It's not much here but I'm going to show you how to set this up in a moment just uh, um, just as a quick guide and it'll just demonstrate that it's not difficult to do. So that's the only thing you need to do, IP address. Um, the other thing you'll probably want to do here, which um, I would recommend, is um, you do deactivate X, Y, and Z. Now, the head tracking is full six degrees of freedom. That means elevation, forward, back, left, right, tilt, you know, yeah, and basically, you know, all the, all the motion. So it's basically in a 3D world. So if you move your head around, you're going to see the dashboard get closer or further, but if you move back, tilt your head, the world is going to tilt as well with it. So do understand, you know, when you have too much of this sort of stuff, you are moving in a pretty fast moving vehicle. Um, it can be really disorientating when you've got too much of these things going on. So I recommend you turn off X, Y, and Z. To do that, you just tap on there and turn the sensitivity down to zero. Offset is essentially what you imagine it is. Basically, it's going to offset the uh, centered position of your head, which is why it's you know it's in the middle there. So, which means it's basically zero. Sens sensitivity. That's the sort of default. If you uh, tap on that, it will show the default, and you can increase or decrease it. As I said, for X, Y, and Z, turn it down to you know, zero. You'll work this one out for yourself, honestly. Anyway. Uh, but that would be my recommendation. But um, the default is one to one, which is very good. So it's all kind of very much set as like, you know, in reality. Now, if you increase the sensitivity, small head movements will exaggerate the head tracking move movement, which means you can see more because obviously you move your head a small amount, you're going to see more of an angle. But since that is not reality, it can be a bit difficult to work with. So I would suggest kind of try it out. Um, just the default settings on the, the, the axis is you're going to run the actual um, uh, movements on. So as I said, that, turn it down to zero. You can see I've done it on that one and also that one. For your pitch and roll, I've set those on to uh, those all on and they'll default. So essentially um, with those, your pitch and roll, what we have, what we're left with is I'm kind of centered in my seat but um, I have sort of roll, I have pitch, and I have yaw. So I have all those movements. So I can look around the car and it's gonna tilt and all that sort of stuff, but I don't have those motions. Okay, so that's how I've set that. And, and that's all you need to do here. And uh, when you're ready to get up and running, you just basically look into the camera and press start, and that's how it works. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do also in OpenTrack to get that set up to communicate with uh, SmoothTrack, but it is very, very simple stuff. So let me show you how to do that now. The first step is to download and install OpenTrack. To find the software, I have put a link in the description. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is simply follow the instructions set out on the SmoothTrack setup guide on their website. And the first thing is to download, install, and run OpenTrack. So we have OpenTrack running here. So uh, that's the first step done. Next, uh, press the Windows key 
and type in firewall. So bring up that window here and we want to go to advanced settings. So advanced settings and uh, bring that window into view and we want to create a new rule. So, okay, so inbound rules and create a new rule. And it's for a program. So next, and then find the program, which will be in our C drive, our boot drive. And under programs, x86, and it should be down here. So we're looking for open track, open track, next, and allow connection, next, next, and uh, just type in a open track for the name, and finish. So that's the next step done. Okay, next step is to click on the network symbol in the taskbar, so bottom right of Windows. Now you can't see it on my screen here as I have cropped uh, the recording window so everything is basically zoomed in, but I will do that. So right click the network uh, symbol and then we see network and internet settings. So bring that up. And what we want here is to change the properties here to private network. Now you can see I already have it on private network, but if I click on that, most likely it will probably be on public but uh, so you want to change that to private and uh, and that's it for there and we can move on to the next step and that's to find out the IP address that we need so if you press the Windows key and type in command prompt or just a bit of it because it'll bring up the best match so bring that into uh, play here and we type in IP config like so and it'll bring up a lot of stuff here and we're looking for the IPv4 address, that one there. So take a note of that number. Okay, now let's return back to OpenTrack. And the first thing you want to do is make sure the input is set at UDP over network. If it's not, you just click on this uh, area here and you can see there's a drop down menu and just pick the right one there. And to the right of that, there's a little uh, sort of like hammer. You click on that and you want to make sure that the port number, you take a note of that. Now it should probably be this. I think this is probably the default uh, 4242. Um, if it's not, take a note of that because you'll need to put this into smooth track as well. Okay, so that's all fine. Uh, output should be set at free track 2.0 enhanced. Should already be on that as the uh, default. And that's all fine there. Okay, go to the settings and make sure that enable both is selected. It probably will be, it's the default, but just in case, just check. Okay, next we want to go to options and bind a key under shortcuts for center, which I've already done. So just click bind and then press a the keyboard key that you're gonna to want to center the actual tracking. So this is really important you do this because when you go into any game, when you look ahead, the first thing you'll notice is the tracking will be in a kind of weird direction. It'll be left, right, up, down. It'll be just basically won't be centered for you. And so what you do is you simply look ahead, press the center key that you've bound here, and it'll just reset the view for you. Okay, we're back to the app and we're almost done. So all you need to do is enter the IP address that you took note of earlier. So enter it into that field there. And also make sure the port number is the same. That's also an open track and pretty much done now. Um, to get going, you press start and also press start in OpenTrack and it should communicate and the tracking should be working. We can see OpenTrack is successfully working. The live track data is updating and the octopus head is moving, mirroring my head motion. So we're good to go. As for the head tracking in the game, a lot of titles will automatically recognize that track IR is running, or in our case, OpenTrack, which is emulating the track IR signal. So if the head tracking is not automatically active right away when you get in your game, uh, just dig around the game settings and turn it on. Uh, there'll be a feature somewhere in the menus. In this video, I'm running a set of course of Competizione and the head tracking is automatically activated. As for the accuracy, smoothness and latency for the head tracking, the tracking never glitched out. Once I locked in the center position, the tracking remained true and never drifted. 
The detection is very sensitive to small movements and remains stable and perfectly aligned to my head movements throughout my testing. SmoothTrack is using AR Core, which is part of the Android SDK. Every Android app that uses augmented reality will use this, including the countless face swapping apps you can find on the Google Play Store. If I swing my head around wildly, yes, I can break the tracking a little bit. There's a little bit of lag there, but it still kind of, you know, locks on. Otherwise, normal and realistically rapid head movements, I wasn't able to perceive any latency. And of course, this is vitally important, as if the on-screen motion trails behind my head movements, it pretty much renders the whole thing useless. Since the smartphone is doing the work here, the performance of the head tracking could vary depending on the smartphone model. I'm using a Google Pixel 6a, a very capable mid-range smartphone. The camera is excellent along with a very decent CPU. So potentially your experience won't be the same as mine, but you won't know until you try. As far as I'm concerned, I found the performance of smooth track with my phone outstanding and perfect for the job. As you might imagine, the camera position is important. Smooth track recommends the camera is placed right in front of the subject. With the fact we still need to see the monitor, that means putting the camera in a high or low position and not in the middle of the monitor, of course. Since the wheel is also an obstruction for me, I have the camera positioned at the top of the monitor. My phone is also upside down, taking into account the position of the front facing camera at the top of the phone. This is how I clamped my phone in place. If you're not able to set the camera in this optimal position, you can set the camera to the side and the tracking will function. Though be warned, it doesn't work nearly as well. I found the tracking wasn't as accurate or smooth. If you don't like the way the viewpoint rolls when you turn and tilt your head, you can lower the sensitivity of the effect or turn it off entirely and simply make use of left and right tracking. Some people will find that a more comfortable way of running things. When you use head tracking for the first time, there is a learning curve of adjustments. Your head movements will alter the angle you're looking down the track. When you're normally used to pointing the car lined up to a reference point on your static on-screen dashboard or just basically the middle of the screen, with head tracking you need to relearn slightly how to turn into corners. So your first impression on track could be negative. It took me about half an hour to an hour to find a level of consistency. After that, the driving experience felt more natural. Obviously, the advantage of head tracking gives the driver greater visibility of the track. Some tight corners that are normally blind, I can rotate my head and see them clearly, making them easier to tackle. I can also see the wing mirror that I wasn't able to before. There's also something to be said about the enhancement of realism when using head tracking. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like VR without the 3D element. I'm not going to tell you this is a game changer that you must have. Some people will love it, some people will loathe it. Head tracking is not for everyone. But I will say with confidence that if you're interested in head tracking, Smooth Track is a fantastic solution. If you have a suitable smartphone, it's just 10 bucks to buy the app. It's really nothing, is it? I think the performance is as good as Track IR or as close enough. From time to time over the years, I have covered head tracking on the channel, including building my own DIY Track IR setup. If you check out the video description, I've posted my complete playlist. So there are some other alternatives that I have featured in videos, in detailed videos, so do have a look at that too. I can highly recommend Smooth Track. It just works. It did a great job. I experienced no issues with it, really. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So until next time, happy simming and bye-bye for now.